You look like the type of person that craves adventure. Out on the open road, wind in your mullet, shifting gears while you bear down on a suspect as part of a federally funded experimental law enforcement program. Well, I've got just the thing for you. I think you'd look great in red, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Before you buy, let me show you what this baby can do. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the History of Viper. Thank you to Hover for sponsoring this video. Hover is a super easy to use service that allows you to create a custom domain name or email address. If you want to brand yourself online, let Hover help you stand out. Look, you and your business are unique. Shouldn't your online presence reflect that? Of course it should. Hover will help you stand out and help grow your personal brand. Hover has over 400 domain name extensions to choose from, including all the classics and fun niche extensions. Dot com, dot net, dot org. If you want it, yeah, fine, they have that. But how about something more relevant to you, like dot design, dot art, or dot tech? How slick would dot actor, dot movie, or dot monster be on your promotional materials? You could get dot ninja or dot toys. Hover allows you to connect your domain name to a plethora of website builders with a few simple clicks to easily integrate your new domain name to your previously existing website. No annoying upsells, a clean user interface, and a best-in-class customer support team. Thanks to Hover for sponsoring this video. Go to hover.com slash toygalaxy for 10% off your first purchase and start personalizing your online brand today. Or just click the link below to get 10% off your first purchase. That's hover.com slash toygalaxy. Viper is a 78-episode live-action television series that ran four seasons beginning in 1994 and then from 1996 to 1999. It's here to sell you action. It's here to sell you drama. But most importantly, it's here to sell you a car. In the near future, the day after tomorrow to be metaphoric, Metro City is under siege by a criminal organization called The Outfit. Metro City Police, Metropole for short, is stretched to their limits, unable to keep pace with all the nefarious goings-on. Lucky for them, the feds are keeping an eye on the situation. With no other options, a top-secret federal law enforcement task force is created. It is an innovative means of throwing money and brilliant technological innovations at the problem to manufacture a solution. The question is, is it Airwolf? No, it's not a helicopter. That should be obvious. But follow-up question, is it Streethawk? No, it's not a motorcycle. It's called the Viper Project, and they have built a single modified 1994 Dodge Viper that, once activated, can transform into the Defender, a tactical mobile law enforcement assault vehicle. It is a car playing a car disguised as another car. Designed by brilliant scientist and engineer Julian Wilkes, the Defender features a full array of offensive and defensive capabilities. From basic features like four-wheel drive and manual override to more advanced luxury options like armor plating, hologram projector, grappling hook, missiles, hovercraft mode, cloaking device, lasers, flamethrower, and a turbine booster. Despite the incredible engineering feat the Defender represents, the Viper Project is in danger of failure if they can't find someone who can safely pilot the stylish, justice-hungry street machine. That V10 engine and those rear-mounted 50 cal machine guns are a bit too much for everyday commuters and automotive enthusiasts. No, this car is going to require a special talent. The Viper Project needs the best driver alive, and that just happens to be a getaway driver from the outfit. And good news, we have him in custody after he crashed his getaway car and almost just died and was pronounced dead. Michael Payton is legally dead after crashing his vehicle during a job as a member of the Highwaymen, a team of drivers working for the outfit. His body is kept alive long enough to make some aesthetic adjustments to his appearance and implant a chip in his brain to rewrite his memories. As far as he knows, he is and always has been Joe Astor, Chicago police officer, recently relocated to Metro City to take on the job of piloting the Defender. But crime goes all the way to the top in Metro City. Councilman Strand is getting financial support from the outfit themselves and orders Project Viper terminated and the Defender destroyed before the Viper team succeeds at their job putting the outfit out of business and Strand out of office. Or dead. With the help of Viper Project mechanic Frankie Waters, Joe Astor steals back the Defender before it can be destroyed to make sure that it can continue its mission fighting back against the outfit. Joe is a former bad guy turned good guy hunted by the good guys while he goes after the bad guys. 
Viper was created by Danny Bilson and Paul DeMeo for the CBS television network. If you don't recognize those writers' names, that's okay. You'll definitely recognize their collaborative portfolio, which includes writing the 1990 television series The Flash, as well as the 1991 film The Rocketeer. They would go on to collaborate several more times throughout their careers on television shows, video games, and the 2020 Spike Lee film The Five Bloods. Bilson and DeMeo were approached by Paramount, who were sitting on a mountain of corporate market research that suggested the time was right for a new car-focused television show. Universal Studios' Knight Rider had been in the rearview mirror for nearly a decade, and someone needed to step in to fill that void. Paramount and CBS knew exactly what kind of show they were looking for and what kind of car they wanted to use. The question is... Is it Knight Rider? No! Well, yes, internally they referred to the production as Knight Rider Jr. Externally, they were in negotiations with Chrysler. Chrysler Corporation was in the middle of a brand makeover for their Dodge brand of cars. Traditionally known for their reliable but boring vehicles, it was time to get sexier, sportier, more exotic. Inspired by an attempt to create a modern version of the Shelby Cobra, the Dodge Viper had been in the conceptual stage since the late 80s with a prototype shown in 1989. Having just purchased American Motors in 1987, things were a bit tight financially. Chrysler chairman Lee Iacocca didn't want to commit the $70 million necessary to begin production on the Viper. It would be three more years, 1992, before the Viper was available at retail for consumer purchase, and when it was, it wasn't cheap. $52,000, which included a federal gas guzzler tax, that's about $97,500 in 2021 dollars. Dodge wanted to position it as an exciting car for people who A, wanted it, B, who could afford it, and C, people who wanted it but couldn't afford it but wanted it. Their answer was to build an entire weekly television series around it. Turn the car into a hero that makes you a hero by association. Chrysler and Dodge were so invested in the series that they handled the design of the Defender mode of Viper themselves. Normally that kind of hero car modification would be left to the more colorful designers like George Barris. No, no, these lines were going to enhance the car and dovetail nicely with marketing. This Friday, Viper shifts into its regular time at 8, 7 central. This Friday, you'll ride the ultimate pursuit of justice. With that car, I know I can make a difference. This Friday, and every Friday, the series premiere, Viper at 8, 7 central, NBC Friday. Part of the draw for the show was the visual effect of the red Dodge Viper transforming into the gray armored Defender. In keeping with the snake theme of the show, the effect was initially accomplished with a digital chameleon surface texture effect that manifested as snake scales. However, as a computer-generated effect in 1994, it was expensive. Which meant that the production had to be creative about their usage. As cool as it was, as much as the audience wanted to see the visual effect, the Viper Morph would frequently happen out of frame or in the darkness. Anything to disguise the fact that it wasn't actually being shown on camera. Before Viper could get to television, they had one more problem. Across the television aisle, a very famous, very successful, very prolific television writer-producer was working on his own show about a crime fighter with a hot red sports car working outside the law. The question is, is it panel? Yes, Stephen J. Cannell, Mr. The Rockford Files, Mr. Hardcastle and McCormick, Mr. The Greatest American Hero, Mr. The A-Team, Mr. 21 Jump Street, was working on his own television show that sounded an awful lot like Viper. The question is, is it Viper? Yes, it is. It was also called Viper. While they had reached out to Chrysler to use the Dodge Viper as their hero's car, it wasn't essential to the concept they were developing the way it was for the Paramount slash CBS Viper. This Viper just needed a cool car and they liked the name Viper. The main character, Robert Scandal Jackson, played by Michael Dudikoff, was a crime-fighting ex-Navy SEAL and highly trained martial artist who was also left for dead before getting a new face and a new identity before joining a secret crime-fighting organization funded by a wealthy benefactor. The question is, is it Knight Rider? No, it's Viper. We just went over this. But Chrysler wasn't having any of that. Under threat of comprehensive legal action that could have included being forced to cancel production of their show, Stephen J. Cannell decided that Cobra was a perfectly fine name for a show about a guy that would, ironically, drive a Shelby Cobra instead while he fights crime and that the name Viper has no actual narrative purpose. 
Stephen J. Cannell's Cobra debuted in syndication in September of 1993. Viper would face yet another barrier before they could make it to the air. CBS was concerned that the show was actually too violent to be broadcast and decided instead to bury it. But Chrysler was so invested in the series that they couldn't afford to let it die. Viper would finally air on rival network NBC in January of 1994. The two-hour pilot movie eventually aired when Chrysler convinced NBC that it wasn't too violent for network television. Chrysler had a lot of marketing irons in the fire, both for Dodge as a brand and for the Viper specifically. The show was part of it, a big part of it, but Chrysler was also looking to make deals for associated apparel, toys, and more. Viper was leading the charge into the new era for Dodge. Joe Astor was played by James McCaffrey, Julian Wilkes was played by Darian Harewood, Viper mechanic Frankie Waters, the only character to appear in all four seasons of Viper was played by Joe Napodi. The Viper theme music for season one was composed by Eddie Jobson. That task would fall to Jay Ferguson for seasons two through four, because Viper only lasted one season of 13 episodes on network television before being put in the garage for two years, reborn through the power of first-run syndication. Ratings weren't good enough for NBC to renew Viper for a second season, but they were more than good enough for Paramount to continue production in syndication. Cut the budget, but increase the episode count. Recast, tweak the concept, keep the car as the real star. Season two would see two major changes for the Defender. One, instead of the snake scale visual transformation effect, the morph into Defender mode featured flipping and extending panels that don't concern themselves with conservation of mass in any way, a transformation effect that is still used today in places like Marvel Studios films and shockingly still doesn't make any sense. It's like everyone saw the Batmobile's shield effect in 1989 and never moved on. And two, the Defender got machine guns, something that its original designer, Julian Wilkes, refused to include. Julian had been a wheelchair user since he was a child, a victim of gun violence who persevered through strength of will. But Julian wasn't in season two, so his rules no longer applied. At the end of season one, the Viper team is mostly broken up when Joe Astor is sent to Europe on even more important special missions for the U.S. government. The Viper project is briefly put into mothballs until Metro City gets hit with another wave of crime, and even though they've tried nothing else, they're all out of ideas. Time to call the Viper project back into duty. This time, the Defender is piloted by ex-CIA agent and expert driver Thomas Cole, played by Jeff Kaki. New series regular detective Cameron Westlake, played by Heather Medway, is there to be the ideal of a police officer. Tough, smart, incorruptible. Dr. Ali Farrow, played by Dawn Stern, is brought in to handle the computer systems. Frankie is back, providing some human continuity from season to season. Viper would run for two more seasons, ending in 1999, long enough to see the return of original Viper pilot Joe Astor and original Viper designer Julian in season four. The Defender got a makeover featuring a default mode that was cobalt blue metallic instead of Viper red, a color that was exclusive to the show. Chrysler did make some of those merchandise deals for a show born out of a desire to sell a specific car, a specific brand to people. You want to make sure you hook the younger viewers as well, maybe turn them into lifetime devotees of the brand. Tyco produced a radio-controlled Defender as well as an electric racing track and individual 164th scale cars that could be used with that track. Matchbox released Dodge Vipers of their own, Ertl showed up with 125th scale model kits, but no one could top the Telemania telephone shaped like the Dodge Viper itself. The headlines flash when the horn rings. There was a Viper CD-ROM game in development. It likely would have been based on the team and adventures from season one. Rumor has it that the game was around 70% complete and that Danny Bilson himself wasn't really enamored with it. Ultimately, it was canceled the same time the show was canceled. In 1994, DC Comics released a Viper four-issue limited series written by Ben Schwartz with interior art by Mark Matos, Charles Bennett, Paul Abrams, and covers by Howard Chaikin. It's the same Viper you know from TV, but in comics. If you missed Viper the first time around, thank goodness you're only finding out about it now because it was a long wait for home media. The entire series was released on DVD in Germany by a company called Kinoelt beginning in 2011. It wasn't until December of 2017 that Visual Entertainment finally released the entire series on DVD. All four seasons, including the two-hour pilot, just in time for Christmas. And that's going to be your best option for watching the entire series. As of this video, some episodes can be found on YouTube, but the entire series is not available to stream anywhere that we could find. There are no current plans to reboot Viper. Chrysler stopped production of the Dodge Viper altogether in 2017 with no current plans to bring it back. Not that you couldn't make a show out of old cars, but that doesn't do a lot to fulfill the original mission of the show, and that's to sell Vipers. 
Selling vipers can be a dangerous profession. In 2005, a lawyer in Canada was sentenced to an 18-month conditional sentence with a curfew for helping facilitate the sale of vipers that were used in the series. 72 cars that were not considered road safe that were supposed to be destroyed when the series ended were sold to various car dealers and collectors to the tune of $500,000. On the other hand, the cars used to portray the Defender Assault Vehicle mode were handmade specifically for the show. 14 in total, they are all destroyed or in the hands of collectors. One came to auction in 2010, but the top bid of $270,000 didn't meet the owner's reserve price. It was on eBay again in 2013, but the highest bid was only $174,000. Technically, that's barely over the actual cost of a regular production Viper with a V8 engine as would have been used for the base vehicle for the show, still not enough to drive it away. But if I could speak to the owner for a moment, the longer you wait, the more the price goes down. Your best bet is to list it right after this video goes live and take the highest bid. Viper was another chapter in a long history of sci-fi vigilante law enforcement fantasy drama television series that did not begin nor end with Viper. It was a bold attempt by Chrysler to not only sell some cars, but to sell an audience on a new image for a brand that had been around for generations. It was an attempt to give themselves a makeover that would not only reimagine their past, but accelerate them into the future. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you haven't heard, we started a second channel called Toy Galaxy 2. That's T-O-O. -O. Head over there and subscribe for stuff that we don't post here. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon or become a YouTube channel member. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if you could drive any science fiction fantasy vehicle, why wouldn't it be Viper? Not as smart as Kit, not as nimble as Street. Hawk, not as glow in the dark as Auto Man's auto car. It can't fly like Airwolf. I mean, that's a pretty big one right there. Not being able to fly, Viper can go into hovercraft mode, but that just means it floats in water, <laughs> not above the ground. <laughs> Cut.